This is George Dion of the Rock is George podcast, and this is a KNAC.com exclusive interview with guitarist and vocalist Tony Kako of the Finnish power metal act Sonata Artica. If I knew absolutely nothing about Sonata Artica, how would you describe the band's music to me? Um, it's your regular melodic pop slash rock music with punch. I'd put it like that, maybe. I can, yeah. I can see that, and I can hear that for sure. Uh, you have a new album coming out. It's your 11th studio album called Clear Cold Beyond. It's out on March 8th through Atomic Fire Records. Now, when it came to the writing of this album, it was kind of sparked by nostalgia. You had a couple of acoustic releases where you visited old material. You had an anniversary concert tour that you kind of revisited the old material and you started crafting songs like you did when you were younger, right? Yeah. You know, all those things, they together contributed to the fact that we wanted to go back there. We've been talking about revisiting and going back to our roots and then and the original some of the Arctica form for ages, for a good 10 years, always telling people that now we are going back. When in fact, at the end of the day, it has always proved to be like a, the, there's only one or two power metal-esque songs on the album and, and it's not enough. The balance has been totally off. Uh, on our early albums, we had like plenty of those speedy songs and a few oddballs and, and mid-tempo songs. And in some point, it just turned the other way around. And uh, it, it necessarily wasn't the best business move ever, but, <laughs> but we learned and it was a lot of fun. But, you know, uh, after the previous album, Tal of uh, 2019, which turned out uh, like unnecessarily soft. Uh, we didn't mean it to go that way, but there were a few contributing factors there. Uh, wrong kind of mixing approach. And, and also I had a huge problems singing my vocals were just you know damaged and uh, i found out after a few years of struggle what was wrong and it was my tongue for all you singers out there if you suffer with feeling of that you can't uh, have any power in your voice and and you seem feel like you are uh blowing out all the air from your lungs in a second that's what i had and uh it just you know it was tongue tension, and I just started stretching it and and making it more mobile, and then all of a sudden I I was able to do a lot of things that I wasn't able to do, like for many many years, and uh, Tavio suffered from that a lot. So it it in that hen- sense also it was softer than was intended. So and then we made the acoustic albums, which was a healthy breather and allowed me to do something other than, you know, scream from the top of my lungs, which was good. And we would have done those regardless of any pandemics happening. But then that came to be and it allowed me to rest, which was a good thing. I, For me personally, uh, I'm, I'm in a lucky, I, I, was, I was very lucky in that sense that I didn't lose anybody for Corona, at, at least yet. Knock on wood, and uh, and uh, it allowed me to spend more time with my family and rest. Uh, I was feeling a little bit burned out for a few years already, and was hoping for a break. And uh, this allowed me to do that, and also get myself self in shape. And then those those twenty uh, fifth anniversary shows, where we were playing a lot of those power metal favorites of people, they showed us that the people are still there, and they get so much energy from those power metal songs and it was a lot of fun to do and we got also a lot of energy from the people so all those things together it made us feel that we definitely want to keep the core of those shows and just add to it write more songs and then stay on that road because it, it's just so much fun you know seeing those people enjoy the show and then also have fun on our own instead of just you know playing slow songs moody songs and trying to evoke uh, emotions with every song, like like sad emotions, which we were doing for a while, unfortunately. <laughs> but but still, you live and learn, and, and now we're back on the right path, I'd say, on the tracks. Uh, and, uh, and, 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 and I think Clear Cold Beyond has a balance that we haven't had in ages in many ways, sound-wise and, and otherwise. 
Definitely a powerful album. I certainly enjoyed it. Why don't we talk a little bit about the songs that you've released so far? Why don't you tell me the lyrical inspiration for A Monster Only You Can't See? Well, it's about friendship, how you may have a bunch of buddies and, and one of them, usually, and oftentimes there is one person who is, who's a little bit like a bit of a mess, like uh, seems to always end up in trouble and do, does things wrong and can be even a bit of an asshole. But he's our asshole and our friend and he's always been with us and then we'll be till the end of days and we, we've got your back kind of kind of thing to it and we've, we've broken so many rules just to save your ass and and, and, <laughs> and you're ours and also that includes your family when you are in trouble we will take care of your family so you don't have to worry about that at least just get yourself in shape and and back on the saddle so it's a positive friendship kind of a song another song that you have ahead of the album's release is first in line if you want to talk about the meaning behind that song well, yes, uh, I have written quite a few songs about how I worry about the uh, state of this world, where we are headed, especially that started happening after I became a father. It's sort of a natural thing, I suppose. So uh, this one is about mostly about the, the recent uh, development of artificial intelligence, especially. But there are other things, but but this especially is, is one, one big thing, because I, I think we are heading towards some kind of destruction of many beautiful things if we allow the use of AI in to, to an extent that we are currently using it more and more. There's need to be, we need to have boundaries for the use of it. Children are cheating on, on school tests and such using AI to produce papers and, and eventually uh, we would end up having people working, professionals that on the paper, they have uh, quali qualifications to do whatever surgery <laughs> there might be. But but when you actually need to get the job done, you have no idea what you're doing there. And that's a really worrying prospect for future, I think. And, uh, and also, I, I think it's threatening uh, many uh, industries also, especially artistic ones, like music, movies. Uh, and, and and obviously the picture art, like drawing and such paintings, it it is it's it's destroying those fields because it everything is getting so easy. Uh, my as a musician, my biggest worry is that you uh, the children they already have like really short attention span, and if if they you know come up with something some kind of software that can create you a power metal album, for example, that is full of hit songs and they just press play and they process it for 10 seconds. And there you go. It is full of uh, calculated power metal hits here for you. And then, and, 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 and it's, it's, that's just a nightmare of a situation. Uh, so uh, that's basically what this song is about, like how we should limit uh, and set boundaries for our children and the use of AI and other 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 things that might be harmful at the end of the day, because we are not using our own brain and mind to create the beautiful things we have done in the past. And uh, we are just selling ourselves short and not allowing ourselves and our children to be the best versions of who we are, the human beings and everything. And, and, and it's scary to even think about where in which fields in life this all could spread uh, in the long run. And uh, we are sort of the first generations, us parents and the children who are getting affected by this. And, and it, it's it's like going in the foggy night. You know, we have no idea what's really, really around the corner anymore. And so we should slow down quite a bit. So that's basically a long and winding explanation of the lyrical content of that song. <laughs> That's all right. Um, it's not a single yet or that I know of is going to be a single, but you have a song on here called Dark Empath, which is a direct sequel to a song you wrote in 2004 called Don't Say a Word. I'm, I'm not familiar with that particular song, so maybe you could clarify how they connect together. Yeah, Don't Say a Word. Then again, it's it's a sequel to a 2001 Silence album and, and song The End of This Chapter. 
which which it's a stalker story, which I didn't realize when I was writing Don't Say a Word that it would be like connected. But when I had the lyrics and everything ready, it was like, wow, this actually interacted. So they, it, they could be like together, like theme, thematically. And, 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 and that gave me the idea, especially when fans seem to enjoy and spot the thing that, hey, this is like the same story continuing or or like playing on, on the same uh, sandbox kind of thing. And then same character. So later on, on, on the following albums, I started introducing more and more elements to this saga. There was like giving names to the characters, Caleb on one album and the following album, there's Juliet and then Till Death Do Us Apart and then many other. I think there must be like eight songs right now or something like that, that that are in the same saga. It's not a, like a chronological story by no means, but something that every song adds to a layer of more details to the story somehow. And it, it's a lot of fun to do. Fans seem to enjoy it, and they've been writing like fan fiction around that theme, and 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 then it, it's 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 a lot of fun for me to write. Uh, as a songwriter, it allows me to get theatrical and and do a lot of things that I cannot really do in a normal power metal song. And people seem to accept that, of course, because it's part of the saga. It gives me a certain freedom to fool around and do weird weird stuff and write really dark lyrics and, and twisted human relationship stories. And it's a lot of fun. And as a singer, uh, on many of the songs, I've, I've been allowed to voice act in a way, sing like really super theatrical. And, and I enjoy doing that, like changing my voice and then playing a character. And it's a lot of fun. And, and I'm sure this will not be the last of it. You know, there will be more stories and maybe one day, one day, enough songs to make a like a compilation album of it and, and even a tour that is only about this Caleb saga and I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sky is the limit. Maybe a movie one day, you know. But there are then again there are a lot of stalker movies out there. So I'm not sure. Depends. <laughs> uh Sonata Arctica isn't just known for their great music, known for their album artwork. You get another fantastic cover with clear cold beyond it was designed by nico and tila yeah how, how Antila, you, yes how did you <laughs> find nico for this um he's been working with sabaton the swedish band and and uh, so we knew the name and his fame because of that and we liked his style so someone came up with the idea to ask him to do the artwork and uh, uh actually this was the first time that i did not handle the artwork and the communication with the artist myself but uh, gave it to our drummer tommy who's uh, running our uh, web shop and handling a lot of the graphical work with people anyways and and, and that side of things and uh, i was really busy with the other other sides of the album uh when we had to get really super busy with the album artwork it was ne necessary to have it in, in within a month or so so there was i i had no way to managed that myself so i gave it to tommy and he did great job i had a few pointers that i gave him that I, what i want to have there would, would be great but he, he did fantastic job with nico uh, the artist who actually made it happen and, and it, I, i'm very happy with this and um we have all the one of my points was to have the same ish colors that what we have on our second album silence we have blues and whites and 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 that reddish sunset kind of glow in the middle which we also have on silence album cover and uh, i love those colors and it is also there to sort of bind this album with our past in a way so and you have a wolf and then the feather that which is like representing the raven our other like totem animal of the band or uh, like uh, those important uh, uh, characters that we have and uh, part of our visual image. In keeping with the nostalgic aspect of this particular album, you brought back Miko Carmelia to mix the album. He worked with you guys in the past. Uh, how did you get him back involved with the band? Just by asking, basically. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we've, been meaning to, meaning to, we've been meaning to work with him uh, for quite a few albums now, but he was always busy or then we had an alternative way of approaching, wanted to do something else. But now 
it felt like the right time when we were musically going back to the power metal thing and we wanted to do it right. And I cannot imagine imagine anyone better handling the job, but the origi original gangster himself, the guy who created this kind of Finnish power metal sound, Mikko Karmiland, and he's, he was amazing once again, as always, you know, I, I was really happy that he still wanted to, you know, work with us after so many years in between. And, and uh, because I know he's been, uh, slowing down a little bit, like cutting down the amount of work he's doing, and getting more picky. So uh, it was it was a lot of fun, and I'm, I was super happy to have him work on the sound of the album. Him and he did incredible job. This album's being released through Atomic Fire Records, which is a, a brand of Nuclear Blast. You guys have been with Nuclear Blast for twenty years. Is there something that the the label offers that uh, keeps you signing back on? Well, uh, actually, uh, Atomic Fire isn't isn't part of uh, Nuclear Blast anymore. It, it it's it was it used to be um, sort of a tiny side label, the original form of, of Atomic Fire. But then it uh, uh, well, okay, let's rewind a little bit more. <laughs> the owner of Nuclear Blast, Marcus Steiger, he sold the whole company except for a tiny corner office, in which he kept. Uh, the name Nuclear Blast, something, something, and and a few of his favorite bands, including us. So we stayed with that for a couple of albums, I think. Nothing changed for us. We always uh, worked with the same bunch of people. And then he and the, his co-workers there, he, they started a completely new label called Atomic Fire. And uh, still we were working with the same people, so nothing for us changed but the name. And now uh, Atomic Fire was sold again. And now we have uh, just like few people that we <laughs> we've worked with previously, and a brand new ownership and 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 people, and then so this is this is the first album that is coming out from a completely different album uh, label, and the, uh, I think this will be our last album under the name Atomic Fire, and then the label name will change soon. <laughs> but uh, I'm I'm not sure if that's like a public information yet to an extent that I would tell you what, what the name is. But anyways, uh, it's a weird mess and it's too much to explain more than I did already. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, they are doing great job and uh, and uh, we are very happy. I'm here talking with you right now, so something's going wrong, uh, right anyway. So, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, Sonata Artica is getting ready for a tour with Temple Balls in March uh, through Finland. Uh, how many of the new songs do you expect to play in the playlist? Well, I, I'd say at least four. At least four. You know, at that, that point, uh, well, in, in a couple of weeks, I think we are releasing our uh, third single and video, the main video of the of the album. And then alongside the release of the album, there will be fourth single as well. So those would be the safe bets. But I would love to play something else also. But we'll see. We are yet to build the set list for the tour. And might that might even change uh, in the middle of the tour still if we come up with something that we're going to add or change or whatever. But anyway, we'll be a lot of power metal and, and, and quite a few songs from the uh, new album. Have you, do you know the guys in Temple Balls or will this be the first time you guys have been paired together? Uh, we've, we've been on tour before and that's why we wanted to have them back. They are a fun bunch of young guys and, and playing this up, up, upbeat, fun, like uplifting rock metal kind of thing. And then it, it's a lot of fun and they're great guys. So we're happy to pair up with them again and, and do this. And, and in Finland only at this point, but it would be fun to go with them outside of Finland as well in some point again, but we'll see what happens. What are the chances of Sonata Arctica in the USA? Uh, well, we have no solid plans to do that other than we have like very solid will to do it <laughs> in some point. That, that's what we have, but it is, it's been getting increasingly difficult financially, the North American tour for European bands. Uh, in our case, we are in a hefty minus already before we even reach Helsinki, our capital, where the flights <laughs> take off to North America. So, <laughs> and, and the price of, um, of 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 visas, working visas, and everything is been getting more expensive. And uh, 
uh, the bus is more expensive than it used to be and the fuel and everything. And then there are, you really just cannot put all those extra expenses on, on the ticket price. It did not, would not serve the purpose and wouldn't be right for the fans either. I know there was, everything is getting more expensive, so it will probably happen anyways, but, but not to an extent to make it profitable for a band. It, it, it would not be fair. So we'll see what happens. How well people take this uh, album, and uh, and uh, I think you know having some kind of crowdfunding thing for the tour would be uh, an exciting new way for us, at least to sort of scan the field. How many people would be excited, and is it like financially viable to come and and, and tour North America? We're not talking about you know making a lot of money. Quite the opposite. We're trying to not to lose like shit ton of money, like. Having a hundred thousand dollar minus would be a nightmare <laughs> for us. So, so if if we make it like a nice tiny minus, I would be completely okay to live with that. It's fine working there for seven weeks and not getting anything but a tiny bill. Okay, uh, that's good because I I love touring North America. It's a it's my favorite place to tour. The buses are great and the people are fantastic and then it's just so much to see and enjoy. And and, and 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 experience so it it's it's our american dream and it's still alive and i hope to come there maybe even for a festival like i don't know the seventy thousand tons of metal would be a tiny taste for that anyways and i hope we'll get to do something like that at least last year you guys co-headlined with stradivarius on, on a run of dates uh kind of it was one of the bands that influenced your sound, from what I understand, and one of the bands you first toured with 25 years ago. Uh, how did how did that series of shows go? It was fantastic, you know, getting back together with those guys. We've been working and, and, and meeting and talking for the past 20 odd years. We can now uh, became friends on that tour 24 years ago, almost. Jesus Christ, <laughs> that's that's a long time. But anyhow, it was it was great getting back and uh, and uh, and then and, and playing the shows and then talking and and catching up and and uh, more than anything, actually seeing the fans there who enjoyed the shows and it was way bigger success the whole thing that we had even imagined. We had quite a few sold out shows, like three thousand top, like plus in Italy, for example, and everything and 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 it, it was way better than we anticipated and hoped for so that that went really well and uh i think the best thing was to see people who had been there on the original tour back in 2000 and now they were there again with their own children that was very heartwarming and, and a beautiful thing and, and and it's wonderful always to see that kind of thing happen and in, with some of the article we have like it's not unusual to have three generations of people enjoying the show, but even the grandparents can sometimes find something to like about our ballads, at least, or some of the more calm songs. <laughs> That's the plus side of having a really versatile style of, of music playing. But then again, at the same time, it, it certainly makes marketing some of the art a little bit challenging, I think. In my research, I saw in 2018, you were awarded the title of Knight of the Order of the Lion of Finland. What is that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a thing that a uh, Finnish president uh, can um, can grant to any person um, who has shown uh, uh, and deemed worthy of, of, of representing Finland. Uh, that way and then it, it it was a great homage and I'm, I'm, I'm really happy and uh, uh my the county or community where i live they had like put the whole thing forward and the president was gracious enough to grant me this title and it came as a surprise a bit i knew that they had like applied for it and 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 but me actually getting it that was a huge shock and not long for me, but for the whole metal community here in Finland, because I think I've, I must have been the first one ever to get it. Not too many like uh, rock musicians have ever gotten any such recognition from from the government or president, and 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 so uh, I was I was a bit of an oddball and got a lot of attention for that, and it was great 
and uh, hopefully a sort of a door opener also for other other artists who are there uh, waving the Finnish flag and and and, and uh, representing the country honorably. So it was it, <laughs> it was a great thing, and uh, you know there are a lot of things that I, I've done for Finland, like for example. Please do not ask me to sign Finnish flag. I do not have a right to do that. My parent, my grandparents fought for the uh, for the flag for us to have that. So it, it's it's some, somehow sacred for me. So I, I've always kindly declined signing Finnish flag. So that kind of stuff. And I suppose all that contributed to the fact that I I was rewarded with this knighthood. It feels good. It's a lot of fun. Curiosity thing and. And uh, something my kids hopefully understand also one day. <laughs> Dad is <a> night. <laughs> That's awesome. Those are all the questions I have for you today, Tony. The new Sonata Arctica album, Clear Cold Beyond, comes out March 8th through Atomic Fire Records. Fantastic album, and I'm glad we had the opportunity to talk about it today. Thanks very much, George. All right.